Welcome everyone. Before we commence the forum, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and recognise the continuing connection to land, water and culture. We pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging. These are Aboriginal lands and will always be Aboriginal lands. As Australia's ageing population grows, so too does the demand for professional and compassionate workers within aged care. The purpose of this forum is to provide an overview of the opportunities available within the sector for both those amongst us who have never previously considered working in this space and for those who are already in the industry and want to find out more. We will provide specific information about our organisation where you might see an alignment between how we do things here at Integrated Living and how you like to work. Before we get started, I'd like to let you know that the audience will be muted. Please refer to the Q&A <coughs> chat box on the right-hand side of the screen if you have any questions along the way. These will be answered at the end of the presentation. Next to the Q&A chat box, there are also a handout section. Click on this to access and download the frequently asked question handout of this forum. A recording of the presentation will be available on our website after the forums. And you can always contact us directly on our 1300 number at your convenience. So let's get started. Today, we have myself, Marzia, a Service Coordination Manager, Senior Recruitment Manager, Lisa Goodwin, Learning Partner, Cassie Robbins, and Recruitment Officer, Angela Mottam, to take you through the forum. We will now turn off our cameras so we can fully focus on the presentation. We will come back to cameras at the end of presentation. And please don't forget, you can pop any questions in the Q&A chat. We are a not-for-profit organisation and a registered charity. We recognise diversity, whether in gender, age, language, ethnicity, cultural background, sexual orientation, religious belief or family responsibilities. We have more than 1,000 staff who are local people who live in the community we serve. Every year we provide choice, high quality and safe service to over 20,000 clients situated across rural, regional and remote communities. We offer health and wellness options so that clients can live an active life, improve their career chronic health conditions and recover more, freak, more quickly sorry, from hospitalisation and major health incidents. To support our clients and carers through COVID-19, we offered both face-to-face -face essential services and adopting to online options where possible. At Integrated Living, we are serious about choice and value. We do that by providing a range of quality services to help our clients to live well and safely in their own homes. We provide help at home, which includes personal care, housekeeping, meal services, and supported transport services. With our respite and social options, our clients stay socially connected and carers have a time out. This includes social outings, home visits, in-home or cottage respite care. Our health services team can help clients stay healthy and manage chronic health conditions. Our health services include allied health services such as podiatry, occupational therapy, diet and nutrition, psychology and physiotherapy. Our health services also have nursing services, palliative care, telehealth, short-term restorative care and dementia care. Our clinicians also run a Wellness for Independence program that focuses on early intervention and health management to help clients with their health and well-being. That is a 16-week clinician-led program where clients learn how to use an iPad, they learn about their chronic health conditions and what they can do to improve their health, well-being and quality of life. Integrated Living also provides disability support services for people living with a disability. Services include accommodation supports, independent living, travel and transport, self and home care, nursing care, community connections, exercise and gym, meals and cooking, as well as carer support. Last but not least, our centres. 
We are so proud to have established award-winning wellness centres and activity centres. Our wellness centres include state-of-the-art gym with specialised equipment designed for older people and people living with disabilities. Our activity centre provides a wide range of creative sessions and events to keep people engaged, connected and have fun. Last year, we won the Asian Age, sorry, the Aging Asia Elder Care Innovation Award for Best Dementia Care Program and our eight-week wellness industry program was a finalist for the Best Rehabilitation Award category. This map shows the regions that we serve, including the wellness and activity centre locations. Our focus is supporting communities in rural, regional and remote Australia. Our clients of staff live in the Northern Territory and the ACT, Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania. My colleague Lisa will take you through some of the reasons why working in integrated living may suit you. Take it away, Lisa. Hi. Thanks, Marzia. Hi, everybody. Why choose to work in integrated living? Well, working for integrated living offers a career that will inspire and amaze you. Whether you're assisting customers to stay connected to family and friends or helping them with tasks of daily living, you will definitely make a difference each and every day. If you love working with and helping people, a career in the aged care sector could be just right for you. We have a range of roles available. This could be providing professional services, such as nursing, allied health, etc., or supporting through cleaning, personal care and transport. Regardless of the role, there are many rewards from supporting older Australians. Our staff, some of which we will hear from later on, often share stories of going above and beyond for their clients and how it makes them feel about what they do for a living. You will go home each and every night knowing you have enhanced the lives of our clients. Maybe your care allows them to stay in their own home for as long as possible. Perhaps you're enabling them to have a better quality of life or giving them the social, in social interaction that keeps them smiling. Either way, it's definitely work that makes a difference. We aim to balance our client needs with staff working preferences where possible. This may assist by enabling staff to work around study, family and lifestyle choices. We do need to consider business requirements and factor in what we have to deliver for our clients. However, we are open to having the conversations around flexibility and work-life balance for our staff. We are present in and delivering services to a range of regional, rural and remote locations. And this offers the option for people to work where they live. It can provide an opportunity to stay in the towns they love versus moving to secure work. I have been working in this industry for about five to six years and I've been very fortunate to work with and see people as they grow within this industry and how they have progressed their careers with purpose. For example, one lady who I worked with called Jane started as a personal carer. That's a similar role to our support worker roles but in a residential aged care facility. She studied a Bachelor of Nursing part-time while she worked, secured a role at the same company as an RN, and then progressed up the ranks to clinical coordinator. That was the role she had when I met her. Then on to clinical manager and is currently a residential manager at a 100-bed beautiful home. I know if I asked Jane how she did it, she would say with a lot of hard work and juggling and support. But if I asked Jane why she did it, she would say her purpose is to respectfully support people through all stages of their life, ensuring they were living at their best and enjoying every day. You might not know right now what your purpose is, lucky if you do, but if you feel it is around giving back, supporting others, something bigger than yourself, kindness and compassion, these things align to working in this sector and integrated living look to help progress you towards that purpose. Who knows, like my now friend Jane, you might realise that your purpose grows a wonderful and bigger career than you currently think is possible. And how would working in aged care benefit your community? Well, for me personally, it is a workforce that provides peace of mind to so many. My parents live close by and I'm very fortunate to be able to see them as often and provide a level of support. However, I can't always take them to an appointment. 
I'm not able to change the dressings if they've had any recent surgery, et cetera. And sometimes they feel the weight of the reversal of the roles, the parent child, me now caring for them. So having an organisation that has qualified, compassionate support workers, nurses, allied health professionals available and able to help is fantastic. I also have an aunt, not a real one, but she may as well be, and she lives in Ballina. Her husband passed a few years ago. Her sons live about four hours and drive in different directions, and she's benefited greatly from the um, social interaction and, and support offered through a variety of programs. She has recently discovered our wellness centre in her hometown. She is keen to learn how to use the state of art gym, what other services might suit her to maintain an active and independent and connected life. So our wellness and activity centres can become that real hub within the community for people. Our clients come, do a bit of exercise, have a chat with a friend, even make some new ones and feel connected. So whilst the staff at these centres see the direct impact and enhancement their roles give to our clients and their community, there are so many other roles within integrated living that make this possible. So we all get that sense of purpose and community from coming to work. If some of you have knowledge of this industry, you might already know what is required to work within it. But if you're not sure, we're going to cover a little, that off a little bit now. Firstly, we have a duty of care to our clients. And in simple terms, that means a responsibility not to cause harm to another person. We take that very seriously. So there are checks and requirements for all prospective staff. These are different dependent on the role. And this slide shows you some of the basic requirements for all roles, especially those where our staff go into clients' homes. You need to have the right to work in Australia. You will need to have a current national police check. We will also ask for and conduct reference checks from managers or team leaders at previous employers. Depending on the role, there are qualifications that you also need to have. Driver's licence with current with any restrictions advised, i.e. medical or restricted hours of use. And motor vehicle registration and comprehensive insurance for the vehicle you intend to use for work purposes. We also ask that you have first aid and CPR. And then there are state dependent working with vulnerable people checks that must be conducted and an adherence to the newly introduced NDIS worker screening check. These roles are not office-based and they are highly interactive with our clients. We also, so we also need to ensure we have the right personality fit. On top of that list are having a caring and supportive attitude, good communication skills, patience and showing a natural empathy towards the elderly or disabled, being physically fit because these roles can be some hard work and a positive outlook. Basically, a combination of those requirements and these traits will make you a good fit for our roles and our industry. One of the roles I'm going to talk a little bit more about are our support worker roles. This is because they currently make up the majority of our workforce. We have about 700 to 750 support workers all throughout the east coast of Australia supporting our clients. We break them down into four groups of support workers. We have our support worker A1. These staff do not need to hold any formal qualifications. Staff in these role, roles provide domestic support services, including general household cleaning tasks, such as vacuuming, dusting, laundry, bed making, and cleaning of bathrooms and toilets. Other services may include transportation of our clients and their equipment, a wheelie walker, for example, to appointments, shopping, social support, respite and companionship. We then have a support worker A2. These are the staff that are qualified at the Cert 3 level in individual support or equivalent. Our FAQs, which will be available, actually list out the equivalent qualifications for you. Staff in these roles provide all the facets of support services along with intimate personal care. And this may include meal preparation, assist with personal care such as showering, grooming, dressing and feeding. They also provide domestic assistance, including general household work. Other duties do also include the transportation of the clients and their equipment to the shopping appointments, exactly, um, and other social interaction for them and companionship. Within our support worker 
cohort. We also have home and garden maintenance workers. At an A1 level, these staff don't need to hold formal qualifications either. They are required to perform a range of services, including lawn mowing, general gardening, waste removal, cleaning of windows, clearing of gutters, gurneying paths and driveways. They are also asked to carry out base, other basic household home maintenance, such as changing tap washers, minor painting and repair. We ask that staff in these roles have access to their own equipment, such as a registered trailer, ute or van, lawn mower, whipper snipper, gardening tools and other basic tools to undertake some maintenance tasks. And then we have the Home and Garden Maintenance A2. These staff are qualified at the same Cert 3 level as the previous A2 support workers. And they perform the same range of previously mentioned home and garden maintenance roles and require the access to their own equipment to carry out these tasks. However, they may also be assigned shifts to assist with the provision of personal care. So whilst a qualification isn't strictly required to work in aged care, gaining one will definitely prepare you for working in the sector and, able, and, and enable you to begin working straight away. Many employers would prefer workers with the qualification since there's less training and supervision to start with and it opens up more options for shifts for the worker themselves. We also offer roles for careers that you might not necessarily think fit into aged care, but they definitely do and they offer our clients and staff so many rewarding moments. For example, exercise physiologists and personal trainers. These roles create and or deliver exercise programs for our clients, either via a home visit or at one of our wellness centres, sometimes even virtually to assist and support our clients or other team members. I went and asked for some actual quotes from our staff who work in these roles, and this is what a couple of them said. Jihan, who is a wellness centre coordinator at, Bal at Ballina, she described her role as a very rewarding job as you feel like you are improving people's lives every day and are able to help seniors to have the best quality of life. She said, aged care is an essential and growing industry, so there's always new opportunities that can also branch off into other areas within other departments. Integrated Living is a great organisation to work for. I've always been supported in my role and feel constantly valued as an employee. My role is very diverse and I'm able to constantly improve my current skills as well as grow and develop other skills where I can regularly challenge myself. Georgia, who is a team leader in our exercise physiologist cohort, she thinks it's a great career option for people with her qualifications. You are given independence in your role. However, you get to work within a supportive team. It's a full-time salaried position. And the company encourages you to set goals and strive towards them. She loves our clients. She thinks they're great. And she also thinks our team is great. She gets the exposure to a wide variety of clinical conditions as well. We also have the on-staff physiotherapists and occupational therapists. Our physios provide advice and interventions to help keep our clients active and moving or regain independence following injury or hospitalisation. They help our clients rebuild muscle to become stronger and more confident in their mobility. Our occupational therapists also play a major role in maintaining or regaining our clients' independence with their day-to-day -day activities. They can show how a small change to how our clients actually do things or offer practical solutions to work with their strengths and any potential limitations can keep our clients living life to the fullest. Once again, I asked one of our OTs the question, why bring your allied health skills to integrated living? And the response was, we have an allied health team full of supportive and highly skilled individuals who are always collaborating for the best outcomes for their clients. It's a rewarding role where you can make such a big difference in someone's life and help keep older people independent in their own homes. Opportunities for professional development are supported and encouraged. It's a flexible work environment. Staff have the flexibility to work from home and plan their day including when they are out seeing clients. And the majority of the role is working directly with clients one-on-one -on -one to achieve clinical outcomes. However, you also get the opportunity to contribute to our wellness programs by delivering health education to groups or helping develop new programs. 
As a few of our quotes from staff mentioned the supportive environment, the professional development and the learning side of integrated living, I figured that's a nice segue to introduce my colleague Cassie, who will take you through the learning and development at integrated living. Our people is based on the understanding that 90% of learning happens in the flow of work. That means we strive to ensure that you, our potential valued team members, are learning all the time while having time away to learn. You've heard so far today that we are based anywhere and everywhere, so we are absolutely take that into account when it comes to our learning suite. As such, our learning programs need to be adapted to suit so we have a blended approach to almost everything we do, which means online content, virtual sessions, just like this one, and some physical face-to-face -face sessions too. So from day one, you'll have access to online modules, all of which are mobile phone enabled, but also a one-on-one -on -one with your team leader. This ensures we cover the compliance training component, but also give you face-to-face -face time with your supervisor on day one. And to ensure that it's not a bombarding of information, we step these online modules out over the first 12 weeks of your journey with us. As adults, we typically only retain 10% of what we hear in a lecture versus two thirds when we learn by doing, which is why we assign a buddy for a staff's first shift. That gives you the opportunity to see how it's done and ask on the job questions. Most importantly, this provides your first interaction with our beautiful clients to witness the value our staff bring to their daily lives. Beyond induction, we continue to follow this learning in the flow of work concept, such that you learn on the job, accessing content when and as you need it. Does anyone remember algebra in high school maths? Anyone used that knowledge since? So we maybe all agree then? Let's learn about the stuff we need when we need it. As such, we have an annual education calendar that steps out your re regular refresher training, but also the suite of additional content that can advance your career, if you want, to move onward and upward through the organisation. As I mentioned before, we are continually improving our learning platform and digitising our education as much as possible, such that you can learn as and when you like, in the flow of work, in the comfort of your own home. You have so many opportunities here, even working part-time as a support worker, for example, while you study to become an EN or RN is an option to acquiring some experience in the field that you're studying. In fact, coming to work for integrated living can happen in a myriad of ways. And then once you're here, the learning just keeps coming. Throughout the pandemic, our number one priority has been the safety and well-being of our staff and clients. We have developed a range of tools to safeguard staff, including a COVID-19 staff handbook, staff and client screening tools, compulsory mask wearing for frontline staff, and regular communication. All frontline staff have been provided with the personal protective equipment, or PPE, they require. Frontline staff have regular meetings with their team leaders, and can send any concerns relating to COVID-19 to their managers or our dedicated COVID-19 inbox for staff. Our policies and procedures have been regularly updated as government health advice changes, and we have implemented new internal directives to keep staff and clients safe. Staff are provided with regular training on infection and the correct there are clear processes in place to help frontline staff in the case of either themselves or a client answering yes to a question in the screening tools which mitigate the risk. Back to you, Lisa. Thanks, Cassie. So hopefully we've given you some things to think about and one of those might be, what would be your reason to want to work at Integrated Living? Is it because you are driven by the fact we are a not-for-profit organisation or a registered charity? You want to give back to those in your community. You have an appreciation for the national and international recognition obtained by our services, programs and people. You value supporting people to live, feel and be well as they age. You want to be part of a fantastic team with people at its core. You like to live and work in rural, region, 
regional and remote communities, we have a compassionate and caring heart. There are so many reasons to work at Integrated Living. And here are some of our people explaining why they do. What I would tell someone if they were interested in working in aged care is, are they genuine about other people? A caring heart, I guess. Uh, you need to be positive, you need to be confident, and you need to be adaptable. Um, do you have a heart for older people? You know, you want to be able to give of yourself and want to help improve their life. We need motivated people. We need people who, we are, need passionate, people who are passionate. And we need people who need people want, to be, want to be part of the team. Sorry, we advertise our current vacancies on our website, www.integratedliving.org.au and you will find them listed under the Work With Us tab. You can search for opportunities by location or job title. This link will be listed in our FAQs as well. So feel free to visit our webpage and have a look for an opportunity that might suit you. Hi, welcome back everyone. We'd like to thank you for the opportunity to present our team and our services to you today. Now we've uh, got some, uh, hopefully some questions that you've uh, you've asked from the Q&A chat. Angela? Perfect, thanks Marzia. So I've got a question here. If I work in a residential facility, am I able to transfer my skills over into the community? Um, I might pick that one up if that's okay with everybody. Um, most definitely, it's generally a very, very similar role as a, say, a personal carer in a residential aged care facility to the work that's done in the support worker space. The difference is, is that in a residential aged care facility, you've got team members around you and you have that immediate assistance if you require it or if you want to check something. With regards to our support workers, that assistance and that checking mechanism is done via the phone. So you have to have a little bit more, a different level of resilience and be ready to um, be flexible and address some of those um, issues that may arise or some questions on the fly or wait for you get responses from um, your cohort or your leadership team back on via the phone. Uh, the qualifications, the Cert 3 and individual support will substantiate you in a residential aged care as well as it would in a support worker role in community. So I hope that covers that off enough for anybody. Wonderful. Thank you, Lisa. And another one, can I work in aged care and another job at the same time? I'm happy to pick that one up. Um, the answer is uh, yes, um, as long as you uh, declare what your other job is um, and that everybody's complying with COVID regulations at this point in time. Uh, we like it to be declared so we know that both venues that you're working at are both safe zones. So the answer is yes. And there's another question here. Are there any positions for social worker or leadership roles? So it's Lisa here. Um, we have definitely have leadership roles within our business. I might let Marzia answer the piece around the social workers and whether or not that they're utilised in our community space. But definitely on the leadership um, side of things, there are quite a few different roles for leadership um, positions and they can sit within the, uh, the care side where people have come up through those roles and their team leaders um, managing a small group of uh, support workers. There are service delivery managers, which is the next level up. And then there's also leadership roles within the corporate space, allied health space. Um, pretty much every part of our business, we look for people with strong leadership skills as well. Yep. So as far as social workers, we don't have social workers as such, but there's a variant on that was the case manager. So the case manager role encompasses social work and aged care uh, background. So if you've got a, um, a cert for in, um, in social work, for example, and you've got some aged care background, there's nothing to, to stop you basically from putting your hand up and seeing if you can uh, sort of retrain yourself into, into case management. The, uh, the roles are fairly similar. Um, so the answer is probably, I'd probably put my hand up and see what, um, what we can do with you with that. If that makes sense, yeah. 
That's awesome. Thanks, Marcia. Do we have any other and questions, Madge? That's all for now. Great. So, look, before we finish up today, I'd like to remind you that if you have any further questions, uh, you can always call our HR department on 1300 364 584 or visit our website. Um, and if you have someone else who might be interested in a career in aged care and think they would benefit from attending one of our forums, we have two more running, one on the 25th of February, one on the 2nd of March. They can register on our website under the events page. Um, I'd like to thank you and have a great evening.